Hi, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to levitate graphite in a magnetic field. I'm going to shine a laser through water with suspended graphite flakes. I'm going to use a humidifier to blast the graphite flakes with ultrasound. I'm also going to investigate how these flakes respond to a rotating magnetic field. Take this piece of graphite pencil lead, for instance. 0.9 mm diameter and it levitates comfortably above the magnets. Here's another piece. Same manufacturer, different product line. Also levitating. And I think that is pretty much what you would consider definitive indication of diamagnetism. In other words, a material being repelled by magnets. And taking those exact same pieces, just trimmed a little shorter for this demonstration. Floating them on the water. Alright, let's introduce a magnet. And one of them is very clearly attracted to the magnet. So once this one is aligned with the field, it is definitely attracted along the gradient. These are the pencil leads used for this experiment. The B green is the one that was attracted to the magnet when aligned with the field. Although both of them obviously showed levitation in a magnetic field as well. So just when I thought I had diamagnetism figured out, here comes a curveball and we're back to square one. There's a really neat trick where you shine a laser through a suspended drop of water and whatever is in the water is magnified if you project it on a screen at the back and somehow it always seems to be nicely in focus. I held a strong magnet close to the droplet, moving it from side to side and you can see some of the flakes are flipping back and forth as the magnetic field changes direction. You do get the odd flake with impurities that make them magnetic I'm not sure if this is one of them, but it sure looks lively. To create flakes small enough for this demonstration, I used ultrasound. The ultrasound can travel through the walls of this plastic container, focusing the energy on whatever liquid is inside. I mixed up some graphite and water, but since the water didn't contain any soap, most of the graphite simply remained floating. I let the ultrasound do its thing for a few minutes, but I was surprised to see that at the spot on the surface where you would normally see the mist forming, there was only a small bulge in the skin formed by the graphite. I made another sample using soapy water, and it resulted in a very high energy water jet. These are the results for plain water. The one on the left employed ultrasound, the one on the right was simply shaken by hand. And these are the results for the soapy water. Again, the one on the left used ultrasound, the one on the right was simply shaken by hand, and you can see that it hardly made any difference. These results might be of value to anyone interested in the production of graphene using ultrasound. It looks like the graphite floating on the surface absorbed a lot more of the energy from the ultrasound, which is why you didn't see a lot of water droplets being splattered all over the place. All the energy went into breaking up the graphite flakes. This is the graphite powder I've been using for these experiments. It's a really old batch, so I wouldn't know if the new stuff has the same magnetic properties. I investigated the behavior of these flakes when spinning a magnet in close proximity. In one orientation, the flakes closest to the magnet turn black, indicating that you are viewing them edge on. And when I change the axis of rotation, it gets a more silvery color, indicating that most of the flakes are being viewed face on. When a magnet is rotated as shown, the local field at a position just above it will also be rotating. You can however also rotate the field at that position by simply sliding the magnet past. You are just limited in how far you rotate that field. That means that in a previous video where I was sliding magnets across the surface, I was in fact creating localized rotating magnetic fields. Okay, so what does this mean? When a field is vertical but stationary, a flake positioned above the magnet 
will align with that field, but the field itself is really just a one-dimensional vector, whereas the flake has a two-dimensional aspect. To better illustrate this, I sprinkled a small amount of graphite onto a piece of paper with the magnet just beneath it. The flakes are all standing on edge, but their faces are oriented in random directions. I then moved the magnet back and forth a few times to create an oscillating, rotating magnetic field. The result was that the flakes still stood on edge, but now their faces were all aligned parallel to the field plane of rotation. Towards the tip of a spinning magnet, the field lines are curved, so rather than creating a two-dimensional plane of rotation, it now creates a three-dimensional hemisphere. This volumetric hemisphere is in fact made up of individual concentric layers, like the layers inside an onion. When I spin the magnet close to the water surface but at an angle, it leaves just a single spot. And that spot is really where one of the concentric layers is tangent to the water surface. The rotating field therefore gives control over one additional degree of freedom of the flakes. And once you have control over the flakes planar orientation, there might be some really interesting applications in underwater acoustics and things like sonar.